All right. So special. I, I'm excited for tonight. Tonight's guest on the Go High Cast podcast. We're looking at head coach for Wyoming Seminary out of out of Kingston, Pennsylvania. Did I get that right? Oh yeah, Kingston, PA. Kingston, Title PA. Town. Cornell Robinson, the former head coach at Christian Brothers Christian High School in St. Louis, Missouri. Is that correct? Yes, sir. You guys broke, well, I don't know if you broke or set the prep. Oh, broke. National, you broke the prep national record. <laughs> now, listen, I, I, I ask for corrective actions here when I say something <laughs> wrong. You had 10 out of 14 champs. Is that correct? 10 out of 14 champs, 11 in the finals. 11 finalists in the prep nationals, 10 champions. How many All-Americans total? 13. 13 out of 14. Okay. Yeah. I'm impressed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, did you break the scoring record as well? No, I think we were actually um, a point or two away. I think Blair 2002 team had eight champs with like, uh, I want to say maybe 400, and we were 10 champs. With like 398 or something. And for reference, that team had like Mark Perry on it, Steve Mock yeah. on it. I think for, for reference, I think that's what that team was, right? Yep. Yep. A pretty good team, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty good team. They didn't have 10 champs though. Yeah, well, they didn't have the <laughs> hey, hey, but they had more points, but I'll tell you what, when you start putting yourself in, in a league and into the names of the 2002 Blairs. Uh, late 90s Blairs, early 2000 Blairs. I think you're doing something right at Wyoming Seminary in uh, Kingston, Pennsylvania. Coach, the prep school nationals has how many teams possible, like when it's broken down from the regional to the to the, the national tournament? Do, do you have the numbers on that? I do not. That's a good question. You know, that, that prep, the prep scene is still new to me, but I do know, like, it's hard to get into because I know so many schools are trying to get into it. Uh, but it's, it's definitely hard to get, get into, and it is the better wrestling than any state tournament I've seen. So it's it's good. Well, it's a true national tournament because you have yeah. teams coast to coast. You have California prep schools coming in, right? Yeah. And you've got West Coast prep schools coming in with East Coast prep schools, Midwest prep I'm, schools. I'm going to say this. West Coast doesn't have as many prep schools, but – I mean, I know you were just saying systematically, but yeah, because uh, you know, they that's why they don't come to Ironman anymore because they can't wrestle any prep schools because of football. I think they got beat by some prep team in football uh, about five or six years ago. Then the whole state of California banned uh, everybody to go against any prep schools. Awful, stupid, short-sighted rule. Hate it. <laughs> yeah, Awful, yeah. just a garbage rule, as you know. I mean, we could talk to anybody in wrestling who cares about the sport of wrestling. They're going to say the same thing. Obviously, your guys like your DC, Daniel Cormier, he's going to tell you that's a stupid role. Uh, you know, right. He's going to shoot yeah. you straight on that because he wants – that guy wants to wrestle you guys. Daniel Cormier oh, yeah. doesn't want to hide from some. He don't want to hide for Blair, Melbourne Prep. He don't want to hide from anyone, you know, uh, Lake Island Prep, whatever. He's not trying to hide. He wants the best competition, and, you know, he's a high school California coach, and that guy, you know what I mean? But like you're saying, the numbers are substantially lower on the West Coast for prep schools, right? Yep, 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 for sure. And then uh, your main prep schools, you know, is mainly on the East Coast, like New England, New Hampshire, Connecticut, uh, New Jersey, all in this area, PA. You got some, uh, they're sprinkled out down south. Yeah. Uh, Lake Island Prep is the most recent one that made the jump from yeah. the Florida Athletic Association, whatever it's called, into the Prep Nationals, correct? Yep. So there's, yeah. there's more teams adding to the prep nationals year in and year out. I know that it was talked about the Spire Academy up here by me. Yeah. Uh, they were talking about trying to get in, but I don't know if they've gotten a charter in yet. I know they're not in yet. Obviously they didn't wrestle in your prep national nah. qualifiers. So, but I know that there was talked about with them. I don't know their exact uh, where they're at in the, the process at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Um... You know, that's that's what I'm saying. Like, it's hard to get into that that prep school. I think uh, so many teams have talked about doing it. Heck, when I was at CBC, our, our AD used to say, hey, we should get into prep. Yeah, it's easier said than done. So, you know, the most thing that your state, your state organization, once they get wind of it, they'll probably tell you, well, all your sports need to go prep. 
because if not, we're not taking any. Yeah, because then it turns into this big thing like you have you have an unfair advantage of a regular because you guys would be PIAA, right? Yeah. Well, you know, that's 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 funny. We're here at Sim wrestling, football, and hockey are prep nationals. Every other sport is PIAA here at Sim. And they won't they won't change it because we've been grandfathered in. Wow. I had no idea. Yeah. Was Kiski, is Kiski like that a little bit? Does Kiski have some of that? Because they're an older prep school, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't know if they're, I don't know. I don't know about all their other sports, but I do know we play them in football. We see them in wrestling, but yeah. That's wild, man. When you, that, I, see, I did not realize that because, so my nephew Ian Miller is at Western Reserve Academy in Hudson, Ohio. Okay. All right, so he took over. Okay. Yeah. So he, because it's crazy because the guy, the big time momentum starter for some was John Gordon. Yep. John Gordon was the coach there three years ago. So your yeah. first year at some, I think John Gordon was still the coach at Western Reserve Academy. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So these kids that Ian had, he had two All Americans this year, uh, Cal Weirden and uh, Cal Weirden and um, TJ Langley. Um, they were both coached their freshman year by John Gordon and recruited by John Gordon. And then, uh, their sophomore junior year was David Habit, Dave Habit, and then Ian this last year. So they had three different head coaches in four years. But Gordon moved somewhere, I want to say, to a prep school in Maine, where he's like athletic director or something like that. But his kid, Nikki, went to UVA. He was the coach before Scott Green two coaches ago for you. And the same for Ian. He's two coaches ago at uh, Western Reserve. Now, where did Habit go? Because he was, I mean, he was doing a pretty good he, job. He went to uh, Medina Highland, about 25 minutes dead west almost. Mm. So he went to an OHSA school. He had a state champ this year, the kid with the flying squirrel against the <laughs> Scotty Burnett's guy. The guy had a flying yeah. squirrel, literally, um, and the official didn't call it illegal. Um, mm. I don't know if you know anything about high school wrestling and a flying no, squirrel. No, I thought you meant like a world team trials. He had a flying squirrel. He had a flying squirrel. Oh, he had it in the Ohio, OHSA, Ohio High School State Finals, <laughs> and the ref – Gave the guy the two rather right. than the yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. you left yeah, your feet can't leave your feet yeah, yeah, can't leave your yeah. Feet. I couldn't believe it and I was like sitting there watching it in real time and Scotty Burnett the coach at Perrysburg is one of my best friends introduced him to his wife and uh, I and Dave Habit I love both these guys right and um, Habit's guy Habit's guy won on an illegal somersault wow. over and it, and it was as time expired here's the other wow. wild thing. You know, there's always like reaction time. Yeah. They get no react. It was like a flash too, like a like. Remember the college, like yeah. It's a screen. It's a snapshot. It's two, right? Um, they didn't do that. They just gave it, and it was as it was crazy. Actually, I couldn't believe the wow. level of what it got through to be two. But the kid earned it. You know what I mean? The kid earned it. He wrestled yeah. hard in the last second. So, you know, it was one of the Bickerton twins from Medina Highland and, and Dave yeah, Abbott yeah. there, coach there. But wild stuff. Um, you guys. Ian said you guys just crushed the field. He couldn't believe how good you guys were. And he said his big thing is wherever some guys are, he wants to be where some guys are wrestling, whether it's Escape the Rock. Yeah. He said some other PA tournament, I forget, um, near near uh, uh, Philadelphia. What's the name of that one? Germantown, maybe. Germantown. Yeah. He was naming off all these tournaments, and he's like, listen. If you're where a Sun guy, a Blair guy, and a Malvern guy is, college yeah. coaches are at all that stuff, and they're watching you. So right yeah. now, Coach Robinson, you have arguably the pound-for-pound pound best high school wrestler on your team in Luke Lillardall, correct? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah. How do you get a guy like that? And, and did you were you the one that recruited him, or was he a Scott Green guy? Because I thought he was your guy. No, no. Luke's been with me since he was like 10 years old. So he actually was with me at CBC. He won a state title there with me. He actually made a world team with me his freshman year when I was at CBC. And then after we came back from the world team trials, the sim job opened up and he followed me to sim. But yeah, he was already making a world team before he got here. He won a state title. Like, no, the dude's been been the deal uh you know the sim helped put him in a spotlight if we had stayed at cbc i don't know if he would have had this big of a spotlight uh 
and I don't know if he would have been put in front of Kale this much and uh, at Penn State, so it definitely helped him out a lot. But you know, as soon as I got the job, you know, it was hard to tell everybody I was leaving, but Luke knew right away he wanted to go. So Saunders at Cornell is one of your guys, right? Yep, Josh Saunders, one of my guys. Okay. Uh, D DJ Shannon, who was at Illinois, now is at Michigan State, one of my guys. DJ, um, okay. Yeah, Malik Johnson, he was at Mizzou, didn't make it through there. Uh, he made a couple cadet world teams. He actually, at the time you interviewed me the first time at Ironman, he had beat Bo Bartlett in the semis at Ironman. Oh, my gosh. And uh, <laughs> oh, my God. It's so yeah. crazy. You did you have one year with Bo or none? No, I had none with Bo. When I got up here, Bo was a freshman at uh Penn State. Okay. And so is this third full year or fourth full year for you? Third full year. Okay. You came in at like this really awful time where it was this crazy COVID. <laughs> yeah. It was this weird COVID handoff and all the restrictions were up. And what happened during that in my eyes, what I'm just telling you from what I'm looking at. The preps where you guys are, the East Coast preps, treat themselves yep. and act at the standards of the Ivy Leagues. Would that be a fair statement? Yep. Okay. The Ivies missed the 2021 NCAA season. Everybody missed the 2020 season. The six Ivies did not wrestle in the post. They didn't wrestle at all in 2021. What was 2021 like you as a first-year coach? at Wyoming Seminary with all of amidst the COVID, COVID term, turmoil? Well, it, it was crazy. And plus, I was coming from Missouri, especially where I was at. We kind of just wrestled through it. I think, you know, in Missouri, the closer you are to St. Louis City, you didn't kind of wrestle. The further you're away from St. Louis City, you wrestled, right? And kind of with not a lot of restrictions. So getting through that, we had a state tournament kind of, not a regular, but definitely a decent state tournament. And then uh, uh, coming here, they were trying to get away from it. You know, football season, I think nobody had a mask. But as soon as wrestling season started, we had to put a mask on. You know, it was tracing. And I think that first year, I think we had a good chance to win the Ironman that first year when I was here with Luke Little Dog came with me. Maya Shapiro came with me. Jack Dara, who wrestles for Stanford, he came with me. Jack Dara, Jack Dara actually wrestled for me since he was like five years old. And he went to Christian Brothers College High School with me as well. And he came with me to Sim. Anyway, we had uh, a lady come do yoga and she was like, oh, I got COVID. And then the school wouldn't let Joe Seeley and Maya Shapiro go. So that kind of threw up, <laughs> threw off. And then Gabe Arnold didn't make weight that next day so it was just a craziness craziness okay so. so so talk about the building the relationships with these guys that you built who then followed you right talk about the yeah. old relationships from when they're like boys right yeah. we're coaching these guys in a boys club some type of boys and girls club is my guess yeah. and then they're following you all the way you know halfway across the country from the mississippi river over <laughs> to the mountains in pennsylvania yeah. right northeast pennsylvania yeah. Um, what is that like building that relationship and, and, and who would you say your, your deepest, uh, longest relationships with, uh, if current, uh, some team members are. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I'm, I say I'm pretty honored, man. Let, you know, parents will trust their kids to send them with me. Right. That's a hard thing to do. Right. Uh, to let your kid go off and do it. So that was pretty awesome. And yeah, you know, I built a strong relationship with those guys and Meyer, because I was a coach on the U-17 world team that went to uh, Budapest, I kind of built a relationship with him. You know, he was kind of didn't know if he wanted to go to a different school. So as soon as I got to, I kind of stayed in contact with him, which I don't know why. I think we were just, I like messing with him. And then uh, as soon as I got this job, I started texting him like, hey, you want to come to see him? And I think he looked at it before, but didn't want to come. And then when I got the job, he, he, he decided to come on and, and come. So I kind of just made that relationship through the world championships. And I hope I answer your question. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's just, yeah. I'm saying like Luke, you've had Luke since he's five, you say? About 10, 10 for Luke. Jack Dara has since he was five. So Jack so, Dara, where is Jack Dara from? And where is, where is Luke from? Jack Dara is from St. Louis and uh, his brothers, Jack Dara wrestled, his brothers wrestled for me. And like, I just been driving him around ever since he was little 
And then he came to CBC because I was there and uh, had a great career and ended up going to Stanford. And as soon as I came here, I called his dad and said, hey, I got the job. You know, it was kind of a no brainer for him. He knew that this would get Jack ready for college to go to Stanford. So he sent him up, <laughs> sent him up with me. And like Luke, the thing about Luke, though, I coached Luke and I was always in his life. But Luke's dad has always been his main coach. Like he's a real good coach. So I was already kind of been in Luke life, but you know, his dad kind of been his main coach. And then when we got to CBC, his dad was on the staff with me. Where's then Luke his, from, from like, what is Luke's hometown? St. Louis. He's St. Louis. Okay. So they're both yeah. St. Louis. Dara they're and both St. Louis. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. They're both from St. Louis and they both follow me here. And as I say, you know, we, we wouldn't have won the national title that first year if those three guys didn't come with, with me. So out of your three years, you've won two out of three years, you've won the national title. Two out of three years, we have won the national title. And you've won at CBC, you won a lot too. I mean, what did, what did, what yeah. were your, what was your best finishes at CBC? We had back-to-back, -back, two back-to-back -back state titles, two second place finishes and one fourth. How long, what, how long has your coaching career actually been as a high school head coach? Man, that's a good question. <laughs> uh, I started at Timberland High School where we won. A, we didn't win state titles, but we won a couple third place trophies. Is that Missouri? Uh, yep, yeah, in Missouri. So okay. I've always been in Missouri, and that's kind of where I really got my feet wet. Won a couple state uh, trophies there, and uh, and then you know when I got mad at the administration, I left and said I'll build it, build it someplace else, and I built it at CBC and made it even better. So <laughs> then you got the best high school coaching job in the country in the sense of I believe you besides you and Jeff Jordan are the only two guys I've ever actually known who just coach wrestling, but he does yeah. a camp system. Your job yeah. at some is to coach wrestling. You're not teaching English math. Cause I uh, think green was a math teacher. I want to say, right. um, so Jeff Jordan doesn't teach. All he did was coach also, thought, but Jeff Jordan had Jeff Jordan state champ camp. He was coaching. Yeah. Tw he had 12 weeks in the summer and, and that, okay. To my next point, I do want to come back and get more about okay. your past and your background in wrestling. I'm going to get yeah. to that. But I, something I kept saying to Ian, he fights a big battle in Ohio and largely because of Jeff Jordan. Jeff Jordan did such a great job of marketing the state champ camp. Yeah. Yeah. All his kids care about in Ohio is winning an Ohio That's state it. title, right? Mm -hmm. And yep. where we're from, Ian and Ian's from, uh, you know, we're from Oak Harbor, Ohio. Um okay. Northwest Ohio, like south of Detroit, an hour and 15 hour, maybe. And then an hour and 15 from Cleveland. So right dead in the middle on Lake Erie. All we knew was prep school or all we knew was Ohio preps. We knew OHSA, yeah. Ohio High School Athletic Association. Preps didn't matter. And his impression was, well, I heard of prep schools as a kid growing up. And it was a boarding school where they sent bad rich kids. <laughs> and he's like, now that I'm here. It's where academically elite kids come yep. to assure that they're going to get into NYU, University of Chicago, Harvard, Pittsburgh, Harvard, Yale, Princeton, Brown, yep. the yep. Ivies, Duke, UNC, Chapel Hill, UVA, Michigan, whatever, um, and uh, MIT, whatever you name, you know, Coast Guard Academy, any of the academies. But and he, he made that point. He goes, I didn't know what, you know, he lost to Kel Chris Villalonga in the Ironman finals one year, right? He didn't understand that that guy wrestled in the prep nationals. He didn't get it, right? Yeah. And he he made a really good point. Jeff Jordan made the state title such a – in over 25 years of running elite camps, and he's made tens of millions of dollars all through just a head inside single leg and hard wrestling, right? right. And peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and, and just hard work <laughs> and doing things right. You know what I mean? That's right. what the guys – that's what he's won with, a head inside single, a collar tie, and – Russell real hard and here's some peanut butter and jellies. Let's go run on the country roads. Right. Yep. He has made it really hard for a prep school in Ohio. Cause kids just care about state titles. They just mm -hmm. want to win state titles. How did you break that down? Did you even have to break that down to kids? I did not <laughs> just because, um, you know, I hate give away my secrets here, but, um, I preach to kids, we just kind of want to make world teams and everything else is just practice until you get to that phase. So I kind of preach that. Uh, up here, they put a little more emphasis on prep nationals just because the school is used to doing it. But at other schools I've been up, been at, we didn't 
preach a lot of state titles. You know, we, we try to aim, aim for the bigger picture. But I can definitely see being under the influence of Jeff Jordan. I mean, everybody knows who Jeff Jordan is, that state champ camp. That can be a hard thing to fight in Ohio. And because the prep nationals, like, it's not a big crowd there. Like, it's not as big as, you know, I was talking to Fellers the other night, Adam Fellers. And he was like, you can wrestle in front of 300 people at prep nationals or wrestle in front of 22,000 at the Iowa State Tournament. But I was like, but the level of competition is not as good. I'm going to tell you that now. Yeah. But, well, that was what those guys were saying. The two kids were Ohio kids for Ian. He's like, uh, a guy I beat in the blood round wins an Ohio State title. And I go, yeah, that's right. a good point. I go, the guy you're beating in the blood round at the Ohio State tournament ain't winning a state title anywhere because he ain't played them, right? <laughs> right, so, right. So it, it's wild to think, you know, but Jeff Jordan has done such a great, and it's like, I'm I'm complimenting him, right? Right. I mean, it's like the ultimate compliment you can pay to someone. Um, He's just done it through like, they wrestle real hard on the evening session and everything's the, 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 everything's predicated in the Jordan system off a collar tie, head inside single. Yeah. And it's what him and his brother did well. And then obviously his sons and nephews are pretty good at it. So um, that's what he, the battle Ian's fighting here in Ohio. Everybody wants to win a state title. They care about winning a state title. Even if you look at St. Edwards, who's someone that you guys, you know, wrestle against and can win matches against you guys. Right. I don't know if they can win the duel. But I'm saying yeah. they can compete with you. They're yeah, in they the compete. match, right? Yeah. Um, their focus, John Hefferton's focus is winning a state title. They're they they want to keep a stranglehold on division one Ohio big school state titles. That's their focus. Even Jeff Jordan's focus, his training cycles, he would explain it to me. He'd be yeah. like, We train for Iron Man, yeah. we train for Walsh Judge or uh, uh, uh dueling Wadsworth, yeah. Maslin Perry, Blair whoever else St. Ed's yeah. and then they cycled to the state tournament was as basic what wow. they trained towards. Wow. Yeah. yeah. But other thing about him is that they're out in the middle. They are like not close to anything. Now, Jeff Jordan's not the coach there anymore. Is no, he? no, no, no. It's uh, a yeah. uh, coach. Not now. They've had a couple, a lot of turnover recently in the last, because I think it's hard to follow up coach Jordan, what he's, what he's done. And it's a just really strenuous standard obviously to keep it, but I think he's still heavily involved and he runs the camp system and which obviously feeds the team still. Yeah. That, that's the, the thing that makes this job so crazy. I mean, Scott Green had a lot of success. John Gordon had a lot of success and, you know, for right now we're still having success, which is hard having that type of turnover to replace a real good coach. I mean, I, I guarantee you CBC who had to replace me not having the same success. All right. It's, it's, it's hard to do that. So that's what makes this place pretty interesting. But you've won everywhere you've gone. Right. And you, won, you, you, you said that to me, you're like, I won everywhere. Yeah. I've won everywhere I've gone. And I was like, that's a great point. And you have, yeah. and you have, uh, how do you, um, First off, I don't even know. Do you have a family that moves with you? Do you are you married? Do you no. have a family? No, no. Actually, uh, my family stayed back in St. Louis, and I'm just up here, man. So I, I end up chasing up here. So you're almost like what Lou Rosali did with Oklahoma. Lou Rosali's yeah. family stayed in Columbus, and he moved to Oklahoma and Norman for four or five years. Yep. So you're doing a similar thing like that? Yep. Do you, you have kids? Yeah, yeah, little boy. Yeah, how old is he? Uh, sophomore. He does not go to Sun. No, no, that's a whole nother issue. But now, okay. I, I, of gotcha. course, I want him to. But yeah, okay. gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Um, does he go to CBC? No, no, he goes. Actually, he's at the first school I started coaching at Timberline High School. Yeah. Oh my goodness! Wow, <laughs> wow. So okay, <laughs> talk to me about your background. You know, we're talking about family. We're talking about things right. from St. Louis. Where did you get your start in wrestling? Did you wrestle in junior high, high school, youth? Were you? Yeah. What was your What's your background in in in, in the sport of wrestling? Yeah, my uh, my brother started wrestling. Uh, you know, I didn't even know what it was. He just started wrestling at McClure North High School. That's where all my brothers went, and we happened to have a coach there by the name of Charlie Sheritz, who actually won. I want to say maybe twelve state titles between Nebraska and Missouri, and uh, so. My brothers wrestled for him. So as soon as I got there as a freshman, I wrestled for him. I, I went like 0 and 30 my freshman year. So where is this located? Where did you grow up actually? St. Louis. 
St. So Louis. St. Louis. Okay. When you yeah, said Nebraska, it threw me off a little bit. Yeah. Well, the coach, I just say he won titles in Nebraska and gotcha. uh, Missouri. Charlie Sarah Sr. But anyway, my brother team, my brother's team, they won three state titles at McClure North. Uh, my brother was a third place placer. Uh, my other brother didn't play, so he kind of started late. Actually, my brother, uh, who started wrestling, was on the same team as Mitchell Mezenbrink's dad, <laughs> uh, John Mezenbrink. So the Mezenbrink family is how we all got into wrestling. John talked my brother into wrestling, and that's how my whole family got into wrestling. So me and Mezenbrink's, we have like a – a real good connection just because I know his, his grandpa good. I know his dad and everybody. And his auntie went to school with me. Wow. So the Mezenbrinks are originally from St. Louis. St. Louis. Yep. And McClure North mm -hmm. is a public school. Yes. Yep. Public school. <laughs> I can only yeah. assume, right? Yeah. Yeah. We won three state titles, two seconds. And so Charlie Shirts was a hall of fame coach. His son is named Charlie Shirts Jr. He coaches, he used to coach at Whitfield High School, which is a private school. He won 11 state titles there. And Charlie Scherz Jr. just took over at Maryville University in St. Louis gotcha. for Mike Denny. Wow. Those are yeah. big shoes to fill. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. So you went 0 30 your first year. Was your first year your freshman year? Yep. Yeah, freshman year, 30 and 30. Six. Yep. Then 30 and 6 my sophomore year. Uh Undefeated my junior year and then lost one match my senior year in the state semis and took third, came back and took third. So you won a state title as a junior in Missouri? Yep. So you're a one-time Missouri state champ? Yep. And two Dude, I had no idea what your background was in wrestling. <laughs> I did not know a thing. I go, All I know is this guy can coach and recruit, and he's incredible at it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, I also wrestled at – Merrimack University under Dave Mercatani. I wrestled there for a year. I uh, made it to like the bubble blood round, uh, lost in the blood round actually. So uh, in junior college, so I wrestled and I played football at North Iowa, but my main thing was football. So you were a football guy. Yeah. And you wrestled some, what was Mer was Merrimack NAIA? Was it Juco junior college? The Juco. Okay. Yeah. So uh, you, did you play football there as well? Uh, Merrimack didn't have football, but I played football at North Iowa Area Community College, and then I ended up transferring from Merrimack to Arkansas State and played football there. You played football at Arkansas State? Yeah, yeah. Were you a scholarship guy? No, nah, I walked on. Walked on? And is that where your degree is from? Nope. I ended up playing there for two years, and then I graduated from Evangel University. Uh, that was that? NIA. NIA Springfield, Missouri. Springfield, Missouri. Man, yeah. you are a you're a Rolling Stone, dude. You got I am, college. bro. I, I, mean, like I should have set my I should have set my steps. Should have sat down in Arkansas. I, I was pretty good there, so I should have stayed there. To be honest with you, the coach kind of made me mad. You know how it is, young, a little stubborn. I I, I was good because I was I was mad because I was second string, which I thought I should have been first string. So what year so. did you graduate high school? Uh ninety five. Ninety five. Yeah. And you you look young, dude. <laughs> <What? laughs> I appreciate it. Unreal. You're a 95 grad because I'm a 98 grad. You'd have been a senior when I was a freshman. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. Uh how many years did you bounce around in JUCO and then uh Arkansas State was a as a one double A? Yeah, it was it was division one at that time. It started it out one double A. So like when I got there, it was like three years under the division one banner. And they wow. still have like success. They should be Division One AA, but they every co a lot of coaches build their resume at Arkansas State, and then they go on. Like the Arvin coach who won a couple titles, he started at Arkansas State. Arkansas coach, it's a it's a few guys who won at Arkansas State football coaches, and they went on to get big time jobs. Yeah, we got that problem at Kent State. Yeah, yeah. Our, we had a guy named Nick Saban who played for us, but they would never hire him as a coach, so we went to Toledo. And yep. then after Toledo, I believe Mizzou, you know, I think Alabama maybe. Yeah, Alabama, Alabama. Yeah. kind of one of the greatest yeah. college coaches. In, you know, he's a Kent State history. guy. He played football at Kent State. I did not know that. Yeah, Nick Saban's a Kent Stater. And now the dude who is Deion Sanders' uh, uh, offensive coordinator was our head coach two years ago. Yeah. I so forget the, guy, the, the young guy, though. 
The guy who's at Colorado now? Yes, he is Deion Sanders. Uh, well, unless Deion fired him already, which might be a thing. But I know one guy left last year. Hold on, let me tell you. With the San Diego State. Oh yeah, that's him. That's him. That's him. That's him. Oh, he left. Yeah, he's already out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, hold on. Yeah. Well, he was at Kent State two years ago. Yeah. Uh, But anyhow, we we have that same thing, and it's a D one. You know what I mean? When you got these D one guys, you they move. They're always they're always trying to. You know, they always everybody wants to be at a power five. Yeah. And this is what they do. And I'm guessing John Sanders was it. Sean Lewis is our guy. He was our Sean guy. Sean Lewis, yeah, yeah. He's a Sean Sanders Lewis. State he guy. was at Kent State, and he's only like 31 or 32. He's probably yeah. now. But, yeah, yeah, I mean, we lose got people like that. We get good people, but they're always, you know, they're yeah. climbing. And th- that's what always. those will always be. And it's only going to get worse now with that name, image, likeness deal. Yeah, I was just telling somebody today, it's, it's crazy. When they did the transfer portal and the NIL and the extra COVID years, it caused a storm. Yeah. It, it it made it unsustainable for a lot of your Mac teams, your mid-American conference teams and your Southern conference teams. Um, it just made it really like, it's hard to sustain winning at those levels because you don't have a bag. You don't have the bag to give the guys, right? You right. don't have the cash. It's how it goes. Right. And then, and whenever they want to, they just jump in the portal. I know it's, it's, it's crazy now. And that was funny too, because uh Deion Sanders was like, you know, when his guys jump in the portal, it's like, oh, we're not really losing nothing. You know, it's a reason why guys jump in the portal. And then when he pulled guys from the portal, it's like, oh yeah, we got the best running back. There yeah. he is. I'm like, I don't know, you just said it. Your guys jump in the portal, they're not that good. <laughs> Dion does a really good job of first thing first, selling Dion, right? Yeah. And then Dion does a really good job of saying and making uh, Boulder, Colorado, the center of the universe. If, if you're a, a, a high school kid, you know, wanting to come there, but if you've ever been to Boulder, Colorado, it's, uh, it's interesting, but it's winter a lot. It's yeah. winter a lot. Right. Um, and they get a lot of snow. It's an interesting place, but um, they got mountain lions. They got a lot of different things. It's a different place though. I see him, obviously it's a step to whatever USC or UCLA. I mean, that's just my, what yeah. I'm saying. Right. Or, or Florida state, you know, he played at Florida state or Miami or whoever is going to hire him next. It's all Colorado is in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, We'll see, man. It's it's hard to win in college football, buddy. Everybody thinks this thing is easy. It is not easy. So biggest thing with you. Um, and I, you know, I keep reverting back to Western reserve cause I've learned so much about the preps in the last year. Yeah. Um, Western Reserve Academy's uh, boarding students, you guys have a boarding option, correct? Yep. yep. I believe their boarding, it's listed, if you Google it, is $75,000 a year. That's about right. <laughs> what is Sam, uh, if you're flat paying and you're like, I'm not filling out FAFSA and my parents are millionaires, okay. what would it be flat to go to Sam and board? Um, when I first got here three years ago, it was about sixty-seven. I bet about now it's about seventy thousand. So seventy thousand dollars a year. How do you go into a kid's uh, living room, an eighth grade kid? If because I know there's that in there. There's that in there. Right. You oh, got to yeah. go to a kid. You're recruiting eighth graders, yeah. fucking yeah. college kids, right? Yeah. How do you go into their living room and drop that on them, or explain the fees and what they'll have to pay to send their kids to some? First of all, I think uh, me personally, when I find certain kids who I'm going to recruit, I kind of look at where they go traveling wise and wrestling first. Uh, I know if you've been a part of a certain, I would say click, I guess, our coaches. Yeah, I, I, I know what you spend that. annually with that. So, and then that tells me how crazy and how passionate you are about your kid being good. So, you know, you know, I'm going to say this in a bad way because it kind of sucks. If you're a kid who, you know, maybe inner city, which I, I want you to, but it may be hard for me to recruit you because, you know, filling out that paperwork takes a lot. And your parents are going to have to be, not saying that they won't, but they're going to have to be crazy about providing you this opportunity. And I know the type of parent who spends $60,000 a year traveling on wrestling might see the value in this opportunity. I hope I'm saying that right without upsetting people. Here's my question for you. Okay, I want I'm going to give you an opportunity to clarify. Paperwork is something that you have to be super diligent about. 
FAFSA, the free aid for financial yeah. student application, right? That's what FAFSA, I believe that's what the acronym basically is. Um, so you have to be very diligent about FAFSA. Then they'll say, we've got this leadership scholarship. We've got yeah. this scholarship if you're African-American, if you're yeah. uh, economically disadvantaged, if you're... Yeah parents went to a hbcu or whatever i i'm guessing right. there are scholars them out there. for everything right <laughs> yeah yep. um you're coming from a school that's an emergency district an emergency school district where under 50 percent of the kids are graduate whatever whatever there's all right. there's all these different things right paperwork you have to be very diligent about filling out paperwork communicating with the admissions office the bursar's office right. cornell robinson head coach there's a lot of ins and outs, a lot of phone calls to take, a lot of emails to write. There's a lot yeah. of logistics involved. Would you say that that's a fair statement when I say it, when I put it that way? Yes, a very fair statement because, you know, that's the only thing I can't do for you is fill out the paperwork and be diligent about it, right? You know, I can get you here as much as you want, but if you don't stick to the other stuff, you're not going to get in. So when we look at a kid coming in there, right, there's test scores that are required, right? There is yes. a GPA yes. that is required. If they're not doing that stuff. You just can't get them in. No. Can't, and, and behavior, like behavior is a big one too. That's if so you've been crazy. suspended from middle, middle school a certain amount of times, you're not getting in. <laughs> Dude, it's wild. It's wild <laughs> that I'm talking to you about you recruiting seventh and eighth grade kids to come <laughs> right. and move and move into a dorm and be a grown up as a 14 year old. Yeah, it is. It is hard. And but you know what's even crazier too, uh, and I like I said I, I'm saying this stuff. But international students, you know, we have a uh, big international student body, and they send their kids off at 14, no problem. Yes. See ya. <laughs> so I want to say Mark Perry told me a story one time. He went to a. Uh, you know, this I might not be saying that specifically, but he's like, yeah, I went to Blair Academy with the Sultan of Bahrain, Bahrain's uh, yeah. kids, uh, the, the, king of Saudi, the Prince of Saudi Arabia's kids yeah. went to my, he was telling me all these royalty, Middle Eastern royalty. And what's wild is a lot of the Middle Eastern royalty, they're either sending their kids to Switzerland or they're sending them to Blair, Sam. Yeah. It's, it's wild, right? Like they're sending yeah. them to elite academic institution in america or they're sending them to somewhere in switzerland that that's the that's the that's crazy. one or the other yeah and, it's a big and we're deal. talking we're talking about literal trillionaires because yes. they own the oil deposits in the ground and i don't know if you know what runs everything every day oil <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's yeah. what runs the economy it's what drives prices it's what it's you know we're in the petrodollar essentially if you think about it it drives the price of everything oil does so we're talking about literal trillionaires they they kind of know what's going on more than everybody else. I don't know if you know that because when you're yeah. a trillionaire, you know more. You got you can hire the best people for everything. Yep. So when he told me that, when I heard him, I was like, that's insane, dude. That's wild, right? Yep. And and that's what you're saying, right? We're talking about royalty is sending their kids to Sam, to Blair, yes. to Malvern, to Kiski. Yeah. Now, I think Malvern doesn't have boarding, which, you know, props to that coach because I think he kind of, not saying that we don't build ours up, but I think he built his with kids who live in the community. Like, it's, it's for them, how good they are is pretty impressive. That's when you say that, that's super impressive <laughs> because it's yeah. one thing you guys can get kids from California, you can get kids from, right. Staples, from, from, from Missouri, you can get kids from all over the country, coast to coast. Um, yeah. Lock Lachlan was international. I know that Lachlan, Canada, yeah, Lachlan was, but I think he was born in like UAE. I think. Yeah, and and Lachlan, I think either he was behind Bo Bartlett for a while, but then he ended up starting. Like, yeah, they had man, Sim had some dudes. Yeah. So when you think about it, it, it it's crazy for me to think what your reach is, right? But if people aren't diligent and they aren't willing to fill out paperwork, I'm lucky. I got this like super smart wife. And I'm not making that up even a little bit. My yeah. wife is super diligent about paperwork with my kids, making sure that they're at everything. And it's and, actually super impressive. And my kids will always have the opportunities they want to um, yeah. because my wife is the way she is. And her mom's just like that. And her grandma was like that. But yeah. 
I um, say you're, this too, Coach, to interrupt you, not to interrupt you. No, I want to hear it. It's always like some good club coaches out there, you know, who work with every type of kid, and they'll contact me about, hey, I got this kid, you know. And some of these coaches, man, they'll fill out the paperwork or do whatever they got to do to get these guys these opportunities. So, you know, kudos to these guys who really are in it to put kids in the best place to be successful and give them opportunities that they didn't have. How many second father type figures like that, that you're basically you know alluding to with a, a coach being acting like a, almost like a parent for the kids. How many of those have you run into? I'm not asking to name names, but how many of those have you run into where the club coach or the high school coach is actually like the kid's parent? Yeah. Probably about eight to 10 a year. <laughs> yeah. No, wow. Coaches work hard, man. Wrest especially wrestling coaches. Like, but they work hard, bro. Work hard. I don't know where it's interesting because I, you know, wrestling is just crazy how it became like, I mean, it's already was personal. Right. But now I would say catering to like, I want to say prima donnas, but you know what I'm saying? Like some, some yeah. of our kids are very, uh, needy, I guess I'll say it in that way. Yeah, well, I mean, there's kids who they have, you know, special needs, things they need done. And you have to understand going into it when you're in the living room and you're not making them phone calls and texting and doing all the things, email and all the stuff to communicate. There's, I wouldn't say red flags, but there's towels, right? There's towels that this kid um, may have an issue. He might got caught vaping at school or something. That's something yeah. you're ultimately going to have to deal with yeah. in the boarding process. They're living, oh, yeah. they're living there. And um, that's a big deal, man. That that's something where it can uh, it can run through the team. Then maybe they can be a bad influence, and you know, and you recruited that kid there, and now they're living there, and that, that's tough, man. You guys really, you're almost in a can't miss situation. You you can't let kids leave. You need them to stay there and, and be successful and develop. I think. Yeah, and and this is another thing here too. Like people can leave when they want, right? You can decide you're not coming back next year, and be out so it ain't like you know you know recruiting retention and developing those three things you got to do here and you got to do them as a college coach what do you think the biggest challenge is coaching at a prep school that has boarding what is your biggest challenge oh uh, the biggest challenge uh man i would say one just make sure i'm bringing a kid who knows what they want right you got to really come here you got to know exactly what you want you got to know you want to be the best wrestler. You got to know you want the best education. And you got to be able to function without your parents around. Uh, you know, true enough, you get homesick, you better go home. But, you know, you can't get here and all of a sudden become a different person that you are when you're at home, which happened to a lot of high school kids who go off to college for the first time, right? So, um, yeah, I think my my major thing is is is, you know, keeping a room, in my mind, I like the wrestling room to be a place where you can come hang out. If I can make it that type of room, I can see you every day. Right? I don't want you to avoid it. So I want you to come in and hang out, even though it might be hard some days. But, you know, I want you to like, we're done with practice. I want you guys sitting, hanging out, socializing, whatever. If I can keep it like that, then I can build a good family atmosphere. And I, I can trick you to stand in the room longer. Not being in the classroom as a teacher, what's that been like for you over the last three years? How many awesome. weeks? 20, 20 years in the classroom, roughly? Yeah, 20 years in the classroom. 20 years in the classroom. What did you teach? PE and health. So you're a PE and health teacher, Coach Robinson, and yeah. now you're not in the classroom or the gym, as some people would say. Yeah. Tell me about that experience and that that change up from, from going full, you know, from coach, teacher, to now yeah. full-time coach. When I first got here, they tr they made me teach two classes, which was, was fine. I was like, all right, I'll do it, and uh, – but it was a lot, though, because that transition year was hard. Uh, but then after that, they finally let me out of the classroom, let me focus more on coaching. And uh, I love it. Like, I don't want to go back to the classroom. I like not being on a set schedule. Like, my my day doesn't start at exactly at 5.30 a.m. getting to school so I can open the classroom. My day can start at 5.30 a.m. to open the wrestling room for a workout or meeting with a kid to work out. Or my day can start at 10 a.m. to get into the office. So... <laughs> You know, I, I like that variety of my day is different every day and depending on what maybe a kid need a workout here or getting up there. Uh, no, I, I, I like it. And most of my day is either calling a parent, right? Letting them know what's going on, getting set up for travel, hotels, buses, 
uh, food and scheduling and recruiting and making contact with future Blue Knights and doing podcasts. And do a podcast to promote and the talking to, yeah, and talking to college thing. coaches. You know, I'm a, I'm a high school teacher. I've been teaching 20 plus years as well. Um, mm-hmm. To not be in the classroom is, uh, you know, a lot of people, that's like a big transition for a lot of people whenever they go to like an administration or they go to guidance or whatever they go into, if they get out of the, uh, you know, education altogether, they always talk about how drastically different it is. I miss the kids is what I always hear. Well, now you're not running into that situation because all you're doing is still dealing with kids, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. It, you know, it, it was crazy too because like I taught at another school at Timberland and I coached at CBC. So when we had to travel for world team trials or Ironman, I had to like say I was, I had to take sick days, <laughs> try to say I was sick and then not get caught on flow too much. And then, you know, coach CBC, I was, I, mean, I was lying everywhere just to get off to go coach. Uh, but yeah, that was going to catch up with me eventually. So I like it much better now. If I got to leave to go coach, it's a part of the job. So when you look at it now, being out of the classroom, you still get to deal with the kids and you like being out of the classroom. Love it. Like I do not want to go back to the classroom. <laughs> you know <what> I mean, <laughs> unless I'm I really a, have to, right? If I, I have to, I'll go back. I'm going to say this right now. Your administration's insane. If they can't see the results you've put out on the mat, well, yeah. not being in the classroom, I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to have to have maybe like seven or eight finalists. <laughs> then they'll be like, all right, maybe you got to teach a couple classes. But yeah. 10, 11 finalists, 10 champs in your first, was it your first or second year out of the classroom? My, this is my second year out of the classroom. So your second year out of the classroom. Yeah. I think you're showing how high level of a coach you are by putting 11 in the prep national finals, yeah. 10 champs. And you're not worried about grading papers, grading pull-ups, yeah. flexed arm <laughs> hang, planking, oh, yeah. all that, right? All that stuff. And kudos to the, uh, you know, the administration. They didn't have to do that, but they realized how important wrestling is to our community as well as our school. So, you know, they want to make it. sure we succeed. What is your relationship like with Coach Kale, Coach Casey? Obviously, Cody Sanderson um, and the coaches at um, Penn State. And do you have a relationship now with David Taylor? Will we see Black Knights from some going out to Oklahoma State for visits? What is your relationship like? And who do you think you're closest with in the college loop of college D1 coaches? Oh, you trying to give me a trouble. First of all, Blue Knights, though. Let me make sure I say that. Sorry, Blue, Blue Knights. Knights. My bad. That was my uh, bad. Um, the, the, the Penn State. The very first coach to come see me when I pulled into town was Kale Sanderson. He was the very first coach to come down here. I pulled into town. He came down to practice and hung out, uh, and it was pretty cool. And But before I even came up here, me and Kale actually had a relationship uh, because I've you know, been to so many camps at USA Wrestling, and uh, because of the NCAA tournament was in St. Louis, he would always use my CBC room when he – when the NCAA tournament was in St. Louis. So I kind of had a good relationship with him already. Now we like talk more than usual, I guess I'll say. Um, but yeah, that whole coaching staff, Casey Cunningham, Casey Cunningham, I talked to more than anybody. Uh, and I'll say Kale second and Cody's third. It's Cody Sanderson's third. But yeah, I picked those guys' brains all summer. Actually, I go work uh, their camps for like two weeks and I'm around them for like two weeks just – you know, I don't make a lot of money doing it. I just do it just so I can become better in my profession. And and that's all the reason why. And I actually used to do that in Illinois, too. I used to work the Illinois camps with Poeta and uh, Brian Mellon. Brian Mellon is a – and Poeta's good, too. I'm not going to knock Poeta. But Brian Mellon at Illinois, he's one of the best coaches I've been around, as well as Kellen, those guys. He's good. M- Mellon does a great job with that RTC at Illinois. And I know his son. Is his son a freshman? Uh I think he's a freshman or sophomore. Yeah, he won state this year. He's tough. Also, so, yeah. He's tough. Yeah, yeah. And he was in the finals of the Greco World Team uh, trials at U-17. He lost on like a caution and won with hands to the face. Some craziness. He's the real deal, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, his dad knows what he's yeah. talking about. Yeah. Uh, but for your question, right now, since I'm in Pennsylvania, I will say 
I talk to the Penn State staff a lot more than a lot of people. And just because, you know, I got three kids on our team going to Penn State. So, you know, I, I in that process, I talk to them a lot. Uh, but when I was at CBC, I talked to the Illinois coaches a lot and Brian Smith. Brian Smith at Mizzou is one of the best coaches around. Definitely a guy who can build a program and a mentor who can teach you how to coach and build. I just did Dom's, uh, we did his, his retirement. We talked on uh, this podcast. Dom Dom hit me up and I was like, absolutely, Dom, you're my guy. Yeah. I'm a big fan of Dom Bradley. And um, I've been seeing him out at Fargo since 06. Dom's a stud. He always wrestled kids that I coached. And I've always been a fan and he's just a good guy, good dude. I like Dom. So Dom announced his retirement on this uh, podcast and I was pumped for him. Yeah, and watched- he's cool. Dom's cool. I'm yeah. a big fan. Yeah, uh, Dom's a man. He's a good dude. Uh, yeah, I got one more. And my boy, uh, Kevin Jackson. Like, me, when Kevin Jackson was the USA development coach, you know, he really, uh, I would say, took me under his wing. But, man, yeah, I got to be around him a lot also. How have people not stolen you yet from some? I mean, there's got to be people coming after you. How do they keep you happy there and obviously keeping you out of the classroom? But how do they keep you at some and keep you winning prep national titles and make and breaking records? How do they keep you there? Yeah, I, one, I think I really found my niche. I mean, I think this was kind of my dream job is, was to be at Sim and uh, be at this place where I can coach the best high school kids in the country, but yet still be part of a school, right? It's hard to find both. <laughs> so, so where you can, you know, in my mind, I know like I tell kids and parents, you know, a lot of people leave their school to go to be at the Nittany Line RTC, which is good. I mean, Luke Little Dog could have did that this year. Yeah. But I think, you know, I have to tell parents, you can do that, but you lose out on all your high school uh, social life, you know, sometimes academics. At least here, you know, you can still taste some of that, but yet you can still go to prom. You can still be homecoming king, right? You can still... <laughs> do all the other stuff that you don't, you don't have to sacrifice so much. So I think being here at Sim, we can give you a taste of the all around high school experience. And at the same time, a high level of wrestling that you can receive at an RTC in the country. So you talk about, you had a Stanford guy, right? Who came, who followed you from Missouri. How much different is a Stanford, like a student athlete who goes to Stanford, compared to a Penn State guy who a Penn State guy is going to win an Olympic gold medal. Luke is not going to Penn State. Luke Liddell is not going to Penn State to be an NCAA champ. He is sure. But like you're saying, he's looking at a world title, an Olympic title, right? How much different is that compared to coaching a kid who goes to Stanford, which they're getting a D1 wrestling experience. But as far as athletics and um, academics you're looking at the best school in the world right in stanford it's the best all-around school um well how much different are those student athletes like man i think uh you know when rob cole was there it was you know he was trying to get anybody and everybody so he definitely knew how to recruit uh but yeah it's a little different i think one those i wouldn't say those kids but you know the kids who goes to stanford harvard and stuff like that they are really pushing themselves academically and the thing that I notice about those kids, they already have uh, money in the stock market already. They they already know how to <laughs> buy and trade already. Like they're already doing that already, and 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 you know they're on Robin Hood already. They're giving me tips on how to do that Bitcoin stuff. Like they're they're all over. That's the thing I notice the most with the kids who are going to Ivy League. They're always about money right away <laughs> already. And we have a kid in our team. Uh, Nolan Lease, uh, he's going to Harvard. Never started for us. Great kid. Maybe wrestled some tough matches. Uh, wrestled out in New York, going to Harvard, and uh, yeah, he's gonna make some money. He's 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 good too. He's good. He would have been a starter on any other regular high school team. It's so crazy to me to talk to you, and you talk about it. Um, you know, you guys, you come from a totally different background than these kids, right? You're from <laughs> St. Louis, right? Right, you're, right. You're, dude, you're not. <laughs> Going to the Hamptons. Maybe you are now. Maybe you are now because what you're in, what you're doing. Yeah. You didn't yeah. grow up in the Hamptons. You grew up in St. Louis. No. You grew up tough. Yeah. You grew up it was gritty. It was gritty. It's blue collar. It's Midwest. 
It's yeah. not, it's, 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 when you sit here and you tell me these things, <laughs> I have a hard time wrapping my brain around it because I can just tell you where I'm from. My dad was an iron worker. Guess what uh, his dad did? He was an iron, iron worker. worker. <laughs> That's what his dad did. He was iron a, an engineer, engineer on a train, right? Right. And I got brothers, an iron worker, right? right. I, I, I look at it and like, you're mid, you're gritty Midwest, right? You're, you're St. Louis gritty Midwest. I'm like, Northwest Ohio, gritty Midwest, right? <laughs> Rust Belt. But those aren't most generally the uh, the social circles that you and I grew up in. No. Uh, it's very far from what you and I grew up in. Yeah. What's that like coming in as this guy who's like an outsider from St. Louis, Missouri to Kingston, Pennsylvania, and you got kids who are going to be billionaires, going to be multimillionaires. How yeah. weird is that? What was that adjustment like? You know what? Why it wasn't weird? Because when I was at CBC, I kind of started getting around kids like that, and I knew like, oh, it's not not that I didn't want to make money, but I'm like, it's social network. It's the social network. That's what it is. And that's why when I when you asked about my son, I was like, it's a sore subject because I know how much he's missing out on being around a social network with the kid who flies to Korea to go, you know, run his dad real estate in Korea or uh, you know, Switzerland, where all these kids are from. I mean, it's, my kid can have friends all around the world, but because somebody is stuck in St. Louis and can't understand your social network is the biggest network you have to making money. Well, that's what's crazy about it. When you say what you just said, it's not what you know a lot of the time. It's who you know. It's who you know. It's yeah. who you know. And that's a lot of the time what these kids are getting when they can leave the inner city, when they can right. leave um a, a rough home life where you know mom and dad aren't together or whatever may happen or my grandma and grandpa or whatever it may be and they can get into an ivy league school it completely transforms their life yeah completely transforms their life um i know that um there was a there's a gritty blue collar tough kid that's on cornell's team um he used to beat my nephew all the time growing up uh justin mays the 174 nice. punter from bellevue ohio yeah. just a gritty tough kid right Justin Mays is it's going to change Justin Mays is the trajectory of Justin Mays's life, dude. Right. Like I was talking to coach gray about it on the elevator at the, the Olympic trials. I was like, what you guys are doing for Justin Mays is incredible. Right. He's going to graduate probably getting a $200,000 a year job off the, yes. off the bat. Yes. At the least. That's at the yes. least. And this is a guy from Bellevue, Ohio. Here's what I'm going to tell you what people in Bellevue, Ohio do. They work <laughs> at the whirlpool directly next door in Clyde, Ohio, mm. right? And they probably fight every Friday night at the bars, Saturday night at the bars. You know, it's just yeah. a rough and tumble blue collar town. This guy's in Ithaca, New York, got in and is completely going to change his life with the network of people that he's now exposed to in Cornell wrestling. He'll get a job, like you just said, probably 200K to start. And they'll put this kid's trajectory of his life on a whole nother path. And I don't know if a lot of people really get that. No, no, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, a lot of people don't because I've been to fighting with one. So, it, well, it's, what's crazy to me is it transcends everything. It transcends race. It yeah. transcends, it transcends uh, gender. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. When you get to an Ivy League school, they're so invested in you. They don't want you to leave. They want you there and they need you to graduate. Because if you got in, they did not pick your name out of a hat. <laughs> they did not. They put a lot of research, time, and interviewing, and all these different things. The, the, the vetting process is 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 insane. At an no, idea, am, am I wrong? No, it's crazy. It's, I'm gonna tell you a good story here. It happened this year. We had Dom Federici and Jake Daly. They both committed to Columbia University. Uh, I will say. Either earlier this year or last year, they committed to Columbia University. And then some things happened to where, you know, eventually towards the end of the season, uh, I don't know if they wasn't happy with what was going on at the university or whatever, and they wanted to kind of open their recruitment back. Oh, my God, that was a fight. Because I guess they signed, like, the EDA early admittance uh, application where you agree not to go to any other – uh, Ivy League or any other Ivy League school. Well, that's, you know, that's super cutthroat, right? 
Yes. All the Ivies will compete against one another to get you. And then once they get you, they lock you down. Yeah. As you're finding out. Yeah. And so they didn't want to do it. And Columbia is calling our president and our counselor saying, we'll never accept another sim kid if these kids don't come back. I'm like, stop. These are not the first kids who ever changed their mind. Right. <laughs> They're kids. Let's get that straight. Yeah. That's the other thing, man. John Heffernan talks about their kids, right? You're getting kids and they make mistakes. That's the thing he says to me. Yeah. Hey, they're kids. They make mistakes. You got to work with them, right? right? You're putting kids in this situation where now they're making these big, huge college decisions. Sometimes they, they screw up. They make mistakes because yeah. their brains are still developing. They're adolescents, right? They're formative years. It's called that for a reason. What do you do and how do you mentor a kid who might be having a rough time? who's already made a decision and a school's already got money invested in him or the admission process is invested in him. Yeah. How do you guide those kids down the right road and get them on the right path? And that, that's a hard one. Cause you really don't want to be involved with their decision-making. I mean, you know, I would always tell them my opinion, you know, and really my opinion goes based on the coach, right? You know, if I have a good relationship with the coach, if I heard good stuff about him, you know, uh, if I hear the coach talk, you know, one person who I like a lot too, who I didn't mention is Mike Gray. I really think he cares for his kids a lot. Just hearing how he talk about his guys. Uh, but yeah, and I kind of base my opinion on that. And then I tell, you know, the kids, you know, how do you get a feel for that? And then the parents, you know, the parents always, they're thinking, well, it's going to be what, what the money is, right? And that's what everybody says. That's the cliche of what the money is. But I'm like, I said, well, I, I would go on the feeling first of how do you like the school? You know, do they think, do you think they'll treat your son or daughter? as good as you treat them and do they have the same values of that? Then, you know, start talking money, you know, but I guess the money, if, you, if the money not right, they may not be going anyway, but you know, I know so many people always say, well, it's all about what's the money going to be, but that's always the answer. What happens if kids get in trouble away from their parents? Like actually like actual literal trouble. How do you guide kids down, down that path? Uh, You know, that's going to happen. You know, I, I'm, <laughs> I wasn't no saint. So <laughs> I'm definitely, uh, I always believe in second chances. I just think here, you know, they have to really behave and, and the standard is the standard and, and the standard won't come down. You know, some things we can tolerate, but some things not going to be tolerated and our deans and our administration is strict and we have a uh, standard to uphold and a reputation to abide by. And, and I don't try to get kids out of stuff. Like, you know, I warn them before you come here, like, Hey, this is, a prep school, we watch everything you do. You know, j jokes that are funny at wrestling summer camp won't apply here in the dorm when you with an international kid from China or Korea or, you know what I'm saying? So, but like, you're going to have to behave. So, and I say, you know, uh, depending on what it is, I may or may not help you, you know? <laughs> so, you know, because, you know, we have a standard to uphold. And, and this is a business. Like, Wyoming Seminary is a business, and we got to keep the doors open by having students here. How many students do you have? What is your current student enrollment? I want to say 400. 400. I know that uh, yeah. Western Reserve sits right around 430 is what uh, Ian told me. So I'm guessing a lot of you. I know Blair Blair might actually be less, right? Yeah, and I think Blair is might be the most expensive one. See, I threw that jab in there. Blair is the oh, most oh, oh, calm down here. Oh, relax. <laughs> Ross, Ross is going to get after me. It's Ross is <laughs> coach, right? Ross, get him. He's good. He's doing a good job. Ross, good dude. I like Ross. Uh, yeah. Real good well, dude. I will say uh, this, though. Hey, where's, is Western Reserve, like, off on his own? Like, not in the town? No, it's right in the town. It's beautiful. Really? So, it's like, oh, Walgreens it's around, CFA, C, CVS? Yeah. Stores. Oh, yeah. Everything's right there. You can walk. The downtown's a block away. Okay, that's interesting. Because, like, all the prep schools I've been at, like Blair, all these schools are, like, off past the cemetery. No, no. they're road. right in the town. Like, right yeah. in the smack dab middle of the town. And that's how Wyoming Seminary is. It's not, like, in the downtown area, but it's in the middle of a town where the kids can actually go out and Just do like stuff, that. Uh, and then they're, it's directly in between Cleveland and uh, Akron. Oh, okay, yeah. What's well, well, 10 minutes off the Kent State campus and 10 minutes off Akron's campus? Oh, that's cool. You go see LeBron James. You can see everything. Yeah, the yeah. Cavs, Browns. If you want to yeah. be like a really bad loser uh, sports 
fan. <laughs> oh, just love all the Cleveland team. Right, they follow the Browns. <laughs> oh, man. oh, it's brutal. It's so brutal. Um, hey, can you give me a quick recap of who your thirteen All Americans were, or your ten final, ten champs, eleven finals? What, yeah. what, who were the historic uh, Blue Knights? I got that right. Who were yeah. the historic Blue Knights? Uh, 106, Seamus Regan, a freshman originally from South Carolina, uh, who trained at Boom Ranch in Tennessee. Uh, and I kind of met him on a international trip three or four years ago. And I kind of just stayed in touch with him when he was like a fifth or sixth grader. You know, and that's what I'm, you know, not giving away. <laughs> there you go. There you go. You had to recruit a fifth or sixth grader to come to your prep school. Yeah. And he wanted to put well, that national title for you. Yeah. And technically, I did recruit him. I just built a relationship with him. Okay. Well, hold on, <laughs> hold on, hold on. You're allowed to recruit. I, I am. I am. I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. I'm allowed to recruit. Come on. Come yeah. on. Yeah, yeah. No, that's, you know, what's so funny. I used to get in trouble all the time in St. Louis for recruiting. And be honest with you, all I did was build a relationship. I just say, hey, come to my school. I give you a scholarship. I was like, oh, let's fish your single leg. Do this, do that. You know, or, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, the kids will start coming around. And, but anyway, but yeah, 106, Seamus Reagan. Seamus Reagan, 106. 130, yeah, 113. Uh, Davis Motika, who's going to UPenn. Um, 120, Nate Desmond. He ended up beating DeLuca, where DeLuca beat him early in the year. That was a good match. Um, 126, Luke Little Dog ended up wrestling uh, the center from Lake Highland Prep. He had a good turn. He's coming on. He's good. The center's uh, dad's a billionaire, by the way. I know. He's a billionaire. And hey, shout out to Spartan, because that's all we wear is Spartan. Uh, 132, uh, Matthew Batella, also known as Chewy. He beat the other O'Neill, who was originally supposed to go to West Point, but uh, Rob Cole flipped him to North Carolina. Uh, and O'Neill was ranked third in the country at the time. Tough kid, real tough on top. And Matthew Batelli, after the third time, Kind of figured him out a little bit on his feet and won that match. Uh, 138, Mikey Trio, he came back and took fifth. He's going you to. You won the uh, first five weights. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. <laughs> yeah, we did. Uh, keep going. Keep going. Yeah. Okay. Mike uh, Trio, 138, 144, uh, Smokey McClure. He was the one who was a match away from place and lost by a point uh, to a kid. Smokey back? Hill. Smokey back? No, he's actually going to Utah Valley with uh, Adam Hall. So okay. Pretty excited for him. Go there. Smokey's a kid from Washington. I think he took second in Washington twice and uh, gambled on himself to come out and wrestle with the big boys. And it paid off for him. Good. Great kid. Um, 150... Uh, I want to say, oh, Anthony Evaninsky, who was a EIAA state champ here in Wyoming Valley West High School, came to us this summer, uh, ended up winning 150, then 157. Vince Mazakis, who left us and came back this year, uh, he won at 157. 165, Joe Sealy won 174. Uh, Don Federici, who's going to Lehigh University, he was in the finals. He lost to the Blair kid, Will Hanko. Tough match. Hanko's a tough kid. Big. Uh, end up losing to him. And then 190, Jake Daly. Uh, Jake Daly had a real impressive tournament. He had to beat a lot of good dudes, and he won He won that at 190. And then Jude Korea, who pinned everybody in the first period of the prep national tournament. Uh what did he say? He he won it. And he's the one, I don't know, Flo did a video where the kid's counting his fingers. He put he counted all 10 champs in the camera. So, uh, yeah, Jude was pretty a monster for that. He's going to University of Michigan. Jesus, Pete. Yeah, and then you had, great. who was your, you had one more All-American. Oh, our heavyweight. Oh, this is a story. Our heavyweight, I don't know how I found him. He's from Ukraine. He's a refugee from Ukraine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this story is crazy, bro. What? Our heavyweight, a refugee from Ukraine, Boris Nazarchuk, uh, he takes, I think he took eight. He forfeited. If I should have made him wrestle so we could have beat Blair, those bombs by points, but he forfeited out. <laughs> uh, 
And he, he hurt his shoulder. Oh. I, I should have I should have threw his butt out there. But uh yeah, so uh we somehow we got this kid from Ukraine. I don't know how. He can wrestle though, and I got him. He's actually another inter interesting plot twist. He he's actually going to Maryville University to wrestle for my high school coach's son, Charlie Sherris Jr. at Maryville. And I'm gonna he tell could, he go could have got into all the Ivies probably if his grades were even remotely okay. Because wow. they're very interested in the story, right? A lot yeah. of it's about the story. You know that, right? Yeah. It's a lot of it's about the story. He's a refugee. Yeah. I mean, yeah. think about what that does to the student experience. You know what I mean? At Harvard, Yale, Brown, Princeton. You know, they're big into that, right? Right. But he's going to Maryville. So good for him. Yeah, yeah. yeah I love yeah. it. I love it. <laughs> and dude can wrestle, man. So, uh, you know, that, that American... Folk style grind is hard on our foreigners, but once he gets used to that, he's gonna be pretty special. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he kept Neutral, laughing coach. on it. Neutral. <laughs> I, I can't lock hands on top. Yeah. Hey, but it's gonna help him now that takedowns are three points, right? Yeah. The, yeah. the two two for one game is hard. The three for one, now you're talking take a little it. bit. I'll take it. Yeah, uh, yeah. You've coached at the highest levels, world championships, different age levels. Um, you know, I saw you this summer or this. Uh, April in state college coaching at the Olympic trials, Luke, uh, little doll and the, the other high schoolers in that way. It was unbelievable to watch, but Crazy. What, what, what was it like coaching at the Olympic trials in state college? It was awesome. Actually, that was my second one that I got to be a part of in the coaching. And I, I, I'm going to see if I can pan my camera over there. Took a little something from, <laughs> right? from the trials. Right. I knew you'd <laughs> do it. <laughs> a little something from the trials up there. Got something in my house over here. I love uh, had it. Luke sign, had Luke signed and dated, so I always have that memory. I love uh, it. But, man, yeah, it, it's fun. And, you know, the best part for me of the trials and the world championships is, like, sitting in the back and listening to all the adjustments and how people either approach their matches, how they approach wrestling different people, their warm-up routines they do. The mindset, you know, my my one of the best experiences I had in 2015 when the world championships were here, Zeke Jones picked me as like a developmental coach to be a part of the world championships. And all I had to do was get my way out there. It's like, hey, you got to get your way out here. Uh, we'll, you know, we'll feed you. You have a pass to do everything, but you got to find your own way out here. Man, I bought a ticket, flew out there. And man, I got to sit back and really watch like, Zeke and how he approached matches, how they broke down film to tendencies. And, you know, it's kind of like football. You know, I've always been a football guy. Like, in the red zone, you know, they line up on – they want the ball on the hash, and they're going to run five plays to the left. So, you know, when I found out, it's basically the same thing, but just a little different in wrestling because it's, you know, it's hard to kind of calculate that with people because, you know, their the bodies are intertwining. But it's still close to the same <laughs> So, uh, but yeah, so that was probably a big experience and to see like Azerbaijan and back then and the Russians were really strong and it was funny too. I remember I like, man, the Russians are looking huge. And that's the year after that, they tested positive for a lot of steroids after that. That's when they went crazy. I'm not shocked. <laughs> yeah. I'm not shocked. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Now I was there. I was in uh, 2015 in Vegas, man. That was yeah. super impressive. That was that was the world's normally I don't think is like that. That was that was hype, man, because you got it to hype. it was just an unbelievable experience. And you know, obviously Sin City can't beat Vegas, right? Vegas does it better than anybody. And I like that venue. I like that it was a good venue. That was a good yeah, venue. That was, South, that was South Point. Where they have it at, right? That was at South Point. Uh that was that was not South Point. No, I want to say that was Orleans. Okay. The Orleans? Oh, it might have been Orleans. Yeah. It was Orleans, I thought. Yeah, it was Orleans. Yeah. It was Orleans. Uh, that think, was uh... crazy. That was crazy. And then, so here's my question for you. You've got all this knowledge. You're looking at things from 35,000 feet. You're the best high school coach in the country. You broke the, the prep national record. Um, you guys have a stranglehold. You're the two-time defending champs in, in um, the United States of America for prep schools. Um how many more years can you do this? You're approaching 50 years of age, right? Yep. How many more years can you coach at such a high level? You're obviously very passionate about this. 
Um, it's your life. But how long can you keep getting kids and, and reaching kids the way you are, recruiting kids, putting kids on world teams, getting kids in Ivy League schools, getting kids into Penn State's? How long can you stay at this high of a level? That's a good question. I think uh, as long as I get to hang around Kale and the crew and I see how motivated they are, I'm like, oh, I'm going to keep going too. You know, I'm not working hard enough. So, you know, I think being around those guys keep me young. And I'm going to add this to not our only record-breaking performance. We also was record-breaking because our girls' team won the prep nationals as well as the boys. So we're the first to win the girls' preps and boys. And I'm also the girls' coach as well. So I'm at my, my total title is the director of wrestling. So, okay, that's crazy. How <laughs> many coaches are underneath you? Five. Who are your five coaches? Uh, my right hand man is Will Weber. He's a, a local guy, Marine grunt, like loves being in the room. So when it's time to like, you know, get the soldiers ready <laughs> for war, he's that guy and he's technical and tactical as well. Then uh, Brett Fry, his son is named Wyatt Fry, who's really starting to come into his own. He wrestles for us as well. Brett Fry is technically the head girls coach. And he takes over everything to do with the girls. But we all coach each other. But Brett Fry's main concern are, are the girls. And uh, he is really came into his own. He was assistant for the last two years. When the girls coach left, I took over as the director. And he became the head over the girls. And then I have uh, Joe Ravelli, who wrestled at Hofstra, who's from this area. Uh, he's been at Sim like the last 15 years. So, uh Great guy who can ride on tough on top. So he's our top guy, does a lot of work with that. And then we have Pat Heck, who his son wrestles as Chattanooga, uh, Lincoln Heck. I think he was there 41 or 49 pounder. And his youngest son is on our team, Marcus Heck, uh, who's doing a great job also. And Pat Heck used to be the coach at King's University here in uh, by Wilkesboro. And, I mean, he's a heck of a college coach. Then our last coach is Cody Keeveman, who brother went to school here, Connor Keeveman, who was a two-time nat prep national champ here. So That's a pretty good staff, Coach. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, I don't think they believe me. I'm like, this is the best staff ever. Like, I've never had, like, guys who work. And this is the first staff where I'm like, oh, they're working. So I can go do other stuff and still focus on this stuff. So. Yeah. That's yeah, if you need to recruit or something like that, you, you know your room's taken care of. Right, right. If I need to go fly out, I know practice being ran hard. The knowledge in the room is great. The guys are being held, guys and girls are being held accountable. Like, yeah, it's pretty awesome. How many girls did you have win prep national titles and how many All Americans? I want to say I think we had five or four girls win this this year prep national title. Or maybe we had five in the finals. I can't remember exactly who I won, I think. Because a couple of girls chose not to wrestle just because the prep national finals was folk style. So a couple of girls just it's freestyle. Like, when they go to college, it's going to be freestyle. Yeah. And so then obviously Claire, the freestyle gotcha. Yeah. Claire Bowie didn't wrestle. I know. I think Amelia Murphy took second. Rianne Murphy won it. Jacqueline Bazakis won it. Emma Bacon won it. Um, and I might be missing one or two. So because, your, uh, your girls' team is elite along with your boys. Who, what, what, what does your administration say to you? And what, how, what's the importance that they place on obviously the girls winning as well as the boys? Obviously, they're gonna, they're, they're, they're putting a lot into it if you're yeah. winning both prep titles, right? What does the administration say to you on, on the girls' team? You know what? I mean, they never really talk about winning, it's just kind of us and, and what we do. But, you know, they, the administration wants to make sure one, everybody's being treated fair, uh, and, and, and no kid is being abused. And, you know, they really wanted to make sure because of the wrestling program has been so good to make sure that we are heavily intertwined through the student body and, and feel a part of the school, which I think is awesome because I think the school is a pretty special place. So uh, I think that's our main concern for the administration. Now they did find me because Scott Green actually did recommend me for the job. So they still wanted to win as well. So, so you you won everywhere you've been. You told me, yeah. <laughs> told me. I look at it. You have. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Could you eventually graduate up to a college staff like what Scott did? Are you comfortable in your lane? 
I'm pretty comfortable in my lane. I think, uh, you know, God gives everybody a gift and a niche. And I think, uh, you know, I think that's always been one of my gifts is to relate to high school kids and uh, middle school kids. I think I'm pretty good at, at relating that with that U17 and U20. And I'm also the U20. Oh, man, I better not say that yet because USA Wrestling has announced it. Scratch that. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I just think I'm with my niche. So I'll wait till, uh, what's the guy? The media guy, Greg Abbott. Gary. Uh, Gary Abbott. I can't make him mad. Let me. I oh. made him mad once before. I got you. Don't worry. <laughs> I don't even know what you're talking about, if we're being yeah. honest. I don't think anything was announced just now. But yeah. my thing is, um, when I look at you, it's it, it's it's crazy. Like you're saying, you have this gift to work with people. You have a gift to, to talk to the younger generation. And I don't know when it, you know, and I'm a teacher and I, I don't know, you know, they, they want us to teach the 34 years here in Ohio, right? Before yeah. you retire. I don't know how effective I'm going to be. You know, I'm in 22 right now at this point. I just don't know how much effective I'm going to be at 34, 35 years. I don't, I don't know. And so that's when I ask you these questions. I'm always asking like, personally, like yeah. how long can I relate to young people as you know, I'm old guy. I got old brain. Um, it's I just, think, uh, yeah, I think for me, coaching wise, I think even if I'm not a head coach, I, I was probably still coach teaching wise when COVID hit and they said we didn't have to go to school. I was having the time of my life when I took a PE class and just zoom with people for a few days. I was like, I've never want to go back to teaching. So I knew it was over for me for a while. Uh, I, I was done with teaching, but coaching, you know, I still get butterflies, you know, that tough match that a kid might have coming up in the semi so when that feeling go away then maybe i'm in trouble but other than that i like the high it gives me i love it i love that you are that into it still and you coach it at such a high level and the kids obviously respond to you and you broke a bunch of records this year and the proof is in that the results is obviously uh you know everything shouldn't be results driven but i think when you break national prep records I think that's a pretty good indicator you're doing something right. It is. And National Prep's been around for a long time, man. It's crazy. You know, this was Sims' eighth national title in the boys' division. That's pretty cool. And it was your yeah. first girls ever? Uh, second. Second. Second girls ever. Okay. Second so they've got one girl, ever. two girls titles, and eight boys. Yeah. And you, know, you don't even want to count how many Blair have. It's ridiculous. Well, Blair, Blair's probably at 30 something. That's my gosh. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's crazy. I looked at that yeah. book. I was like, this is crazy. That's nuts. Yeah. They've had such a high level. But you know what? New King in town. There it is. It's a new sheriff of town. <laughs> <laughs> hey, right. real quick. What do you think oh. of David Taylor taking that job? Like, did what you do see I that think? Cover? What do yeah. I think? What do you think? I think this is the only thing that would have changed and derailed what. Penn State was doing. I think they would have won 10 or 12 more titles. I think this causes a major crack in the foundation. And I know that David has unlimited resources. He has a private jet to go to every kid's. He could be in Luke's uh, living room tonight, if he want, tomorrow morning, if he wanted to be. I understand Luke's going to Penn State. I get that. But I think I don't know if they're going to be having Thanksgiving dinner anymore. Him and Coach Sanderson. I don't know if they're going to be. I think that that obviously um, will put a strain on the relationship uh, pretty substantially. But I think this is the thing that had to happen if Penn State wasn't going to win ten in a row, ten more in a row. That that's they had to, yeah, they had to find some way to get somebody out of there. I, I saw it coming years ago though. Right. You can see old interviews, get... old interviews. Uh -huh. Where I'm always asking David Taylor, are you going to go to Ann Arbor? Are you going to go to Columbus? Are you going to go somewhere yeah. where they're going to pay a million dollars a year, two million dollars a year? And you'll you'll love. I'll show you. I'll send him to you. Yeah, send him to me. And he's always like, he, he I can't believe you're at. Like it was like I caught him off guard a lot of the time. I remember, like, I remember one time I think you asked him something. He's like, no, I, I like what's going on in Penn State. Like he yes. kept saying that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I knew. I could see something was something happened. Obviously. Something happened. I don't think that this was driven by um, everything's A-OK -okay and, and, and good to go there. I think obviously something – I don't know. I'm not saying I know. Right, right, but right. obviously you don't go from, I love what's going on at Penn State. I'll wait till Kale Sanderson's done. Then I'll be the next head coach. You don't go from that to Paycom, CEO bringing you out, telling you you can take his jet anywhere you need to go. 
anytime. Get, go get whoever you want. Um, I've heard some of the NIL deals that they're offering people are insane. Yeah, um, I heard five hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, there you go. Yes, We've heard it. Heard the same thing. We've heard the same thing. So, um, yeah, uh, I I think this is the only thing that really could have. And man, Ohio State does a great job. Michigan does a great job. Yeah. Cornell's obviously, obviously, with no scholarships, does a great job. Um, you can look. NC State does a great job. I mean. Look at the top 10. They're all doing a great job, man. Um, but I think ultimately this was the only thing that it could happen. I think he's going to take and replicate. He's just going to take that model to Stillwater. Yeah. Hey, I'm going to ask you another personal question because, you know, I love what you do with your Ohio cast. But I really like when you used to announce on flow. Like, are you ever going to go back to flow to announce? Like, like when you used to do the matches, your voice really had a good feel for it. Like how you spoke. Uh, I don't know the answer to that. I, uh, yeah, I don't. I, I mean, pro I don't know. I don't know the answer to. That. I don't. I don't know. Right. I mean, I'm pretty happy and like you're happy in your lane. I'm very happy. Yeah. In my lane. Okay. Uh, listen, I, here, here's something I'll tell you. I'll tell you this definitively. Right. I'm never moving to Austin, Texas. Gotcha. It's not the center of wrestling in the universe. No, it's not. Okay. I love Northeast Ohio. I love Western Pennsylvania. In my opinion, Pennsylvania and Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, Michigan, and Wisconsin, Minnesota, Iowa. I feel like we're the heart, New Jersey. I feel like we're New York. We are the heart of where it's at. I can okay. get to literally every place I just said in under eight hours. I agree. I so agree. their thing was always this big thing about moving to Austin. I'm never moving to Austin, Texas. I'm not going to stop teaching. So right. those two things, I'd never move. I'd never give up teaching. Um, 1099, independent contractor. If Mark Bader wants to do something, I'm all ears. Love him. Yeah, no. Now, they got to get you on the I like your voice. You were good with it. Just You brought a good personality to it. So I, I just thought you were real good. Which you were real good with doing your own thing, too. But, like, hearing you do the matches was always cool, too. Did you have a favorite? Is there any match that sticks out to you? I probably ain't thinking now to watch so many of them. I don't know. I can't remember now. You remember Shoegate? I'm, okay, I was thinking of Shoegate, but I didn't know if you was on the call then. It was me. Okay. It was <laughs> Willie and I. It was Willie and okay. I. I, 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 want to, I promise you, I wanted to say Shoegate, but I was like, no, I don't think he was on the call then. Yeah, Willie yeah. and I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Willie and I were on that one. Like, that was the best. Yeah, Shoegate was pretty crazy because uh was it Pala Coach Palazzo? Yeah, Palazzo and, and Palazzo Izzy. and Izzy were literally going to fight on the mat. It was I think it was Joey Silva and was it Ragason? Who was it? Joey Silva and uh Real Woods. Real it was real, it was real. Yeah, yes. I love it so much because yeah, dude, I just, you're right. I get fired up about it. But like, my thing is, I just like the freedom of what I do. I appreciate you saying that. It's a very high compliment. But I think the guy who's the best high school coach in the country, he's got some pull if that's what he wants to happen. <laughs> I I mean, maybe, it, maybe it happens, but I'm never moving to Austin, Texas. Yeah. You, you, I'm never you giving up teaching. All right. Well, I don't think you should have to move, but definitely announced doing the matches. You and Fratwell, to me, have like a very, different feel than you're announcing that which which I thought connected with people a lot. I hope that guy announces all the matches. I hope that guy because he goes to all the stuff and um he's just like fanatically loves the sport of wrestling. And I hope that I could see he'll he he'll be back on the mic there. But I I just don't see it for me. But um man I hope he does. I think he does a great job and he's just got a unique flavor and he's got that that voice and that raspy voice and yeah 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 I, I'd like to see him on there but He'll be on there before Iowa. Let's just put it that way. Hey, now, did you listen to Aaron Brooks' interview on Bash Mania? Not that I'm promoting anybody else's uh, podcast. Or anyone's. You should I, listen to it. It's, it's you think I care about that? I don't care uh, about that. Promote that. I Bash's a nice guy. I don't care. Promote, uh, promote the, the tire out. To listen to mine, too. <laughs> Tell me, what happened? He was just saying, he asked something about David Taylor and Aaron. And Aaron, you know, being the man that he is young man that he is he was like, outspoken christian can we say that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 
Uh, that There's nothing wrong with that. I, he, I, I, I'm good with that. He hoped David Taylor took the job because uh, it really thought hard about it and didn't do it on a lack of emotions of what happened. And, you know, he kind of, I don't want to make sure I'm putting words in my mouth. I have to listen to it again, but he kind of said in a way that the story of him being um, not passing the PED test or whatever yeah. kind of came out after he beat Taylor through Taylor's camp. Oh, really? And, yeah. I did not know that. That's what I kind of took from it. Now, I could be reading it wrong, but it definitely didn't seem like any love loss. Yeah, I don't think they're buddies. I don't think that they're going to be that. Once again, I don't think I don't think Coach Kale and him are going to be playing Pokemon cards, riding around in a golf yeah. cart, and I don't think him and uh, Aaron Brooks are going to be going to church together. And you know, Aaron actually went with uh, David to the Olympics in what 2021. Yeah, in and, Japan. And yeah, I, yeah. And then after that, I guess they stopped working out together. After that, so they haven't worked yeah. out together in two years. Little Taylor Swift, bad blood. <laughs> yeah, in a bad way. But <laughs> hey, happy Valley can't be happy all the time. Correct. I hey, listen. I love and welcome your questions. You can keep shooting them if you want to. I'm good. I don't. People don't normally ask me questions. I actually appreciate them. I appreciate the praise. I feel bad I didn't watch the Aaron Brooks thing. Now I'm guessing it's probably free, so I got to go watch it now. Yeah, you um, watch that one. It was interesting. Yeah, it sounds like once again I don't think they're going to be going to teach Sunday school together. I don't think that's going to be a thing. I don't think he's going to invite him out to uh, groom cows or anything at the farm. <laughs> Ride ponies or anything. But, no, uh, but but David, I've covered David since David was a junior high kid. Had him at the Burnett camps when he was a, a boy, nine, ten-year-old boy. So I've known David. You know, they were coming into Ohio from uh, Wyoming at that point in time. And um, – him and Logan Stever beat each other for a week. They beat each other up for a week straight. It was the craziest thing ever because oh, one God. one session, Stever would mangle him. Next right. session, David Taylor would come back and just mop him. And it was it was crazy. It was crazy to think because they were little. They were little and they were the same size at that point. <laughs> so I go way back with David Taylor. I have a great relationship, uh, at least personally, media-wise, with David Taylor. I, once again, I I mean – He's cool. He's always been uh, accommodating and easy to speak to and available. So I have a, I have a good, we go back and I got a good relationship with him as far as media wrestler guy. I, I, I don't mean to cut you off. It's funny though. Willie Saylor just texted me. So I had uh fellers on my podcast yesterday and it's posted on social media. Uh, the guy who runs my podcast on Rockfin, Jonathan Dixon under Missouri wrestling.com. He figured out how to post the whole podcast to social media. And it. anyway, I told a story on how Iowa was supposed to come to see him, and then they ghosted me. And Willie Sailor's like, this story about Warner Star is hilarious. Like, Iowa ghosted me. They're like, hey, you know, they really want to include Joe Silly, which, you know, makes sense. Uh, so they're like, hey, we're coming Tuesday. And I'm like, you sure you're coming Tuesday? Because I got the Columbia coach coming down. And he was like, yeah, we'll, you know, Warner Star, like, yeah, we'll be there. All right, all right. So I told the Columbia coach, like, hey, you got to come down on Wednesday. I had to switch the date on you. Man, Tuesday came. Nut crickets. I'm texting, calling, like, hey, are you guys coming? You still coming? Nothing. Ghosted you. Ghosted me. But yeah, Willie Sailor just started talking, texting me, talking about that story. <laughs> Crazy, dude. Crazy. Money <laughs> starts my guy. I can't believe he ghosted you. But you know yeah, what? You're saying it happened. Yeah, he ghosted me bad. I, I didn't even get a hey, coach. We can't make it to this today. Let's. Let's try next week, or I'll hit you when you get somebody else. We want. Well, I, look, I'm going to be fair with you on. I'm going to shoot you straight on Morningstar. He probably had pigs to castrate or <laughs> pigs to feed, or so. He, he's got a big farm, really. He does. <laughs> yeah, hey, he I'm, I'm hey, feel so yeah. bad too because I've been hating Iowa City. Not hate them. I shouldn't say hate them. Well, but, you just you're not I, you're you're salty. You're bitter. Yeah, yeah I'm like, man, they can't show me enough respect for that. Yeah. I shouldn't say hate because I don't hate Iowa. No, nah, you don't hate them, but. Man. I'd reach out and see if you could repair that because that'd be good for them and good for you. I'm good. <laughs> it's happy where I'm at. <laughs> I love it. Hey, you asked a question too about David Taylor. Uh, you know, I was, you know, Taylor, I'll talk every now and then, but I've always, like I said, I've always been cool with Casey Cunningham and uh, yeah. uh, 
Kale, but I got a feeling David Taylor. Like I sent him a text, he haven't hit me back yet. But uh, when I first came to uh, Sim too, he was actually reached out a lot too. So good dude. David's a good dude. This guy, yeah, here, here's what I'm gonna tell you about those guys. My experience with those guys. First off, Kale Sanderson is low key. He wants to yeah. develop athletes and win, and he wants to do his own thing. He's not like this guy who wants to be in the media spotlight. I don't even try and bother the guy for interviews because he just wants to do his own thing. And that's fine. I'm cool with that. I used to kind of get quasi like bummed out about it or bad. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. It's just who the guy is. He's a low key guy and he wants to do what he wants to do. Um, He does a really good job of protecting his guys from it. Cause as you know, it can be poisonous and toxic, Um, you know, social media and the media in general. So I think he does a great job. Right. Um, And I think he's a good guy. But I think his A1 number one thing is making sure his guys are in tip-top shape. Distractions are a minimum. Obviously, school and grades. And then making sure everybody's happy. As you know, you got to re-recruit your own guys sometimes. As I say, retention is a hard thing. These yeah, days. retention's hard, man. And now I think, obviously, with this, this move with David Taylor, um, I think that what's going to happen is – Basic. Thomas Thomas Haynes is a is a new guy. I mean, he moved yeah. there. I mean, these things you got to see him coming. You got and you know they see him coming, right? And um, yeah. that's a, that's the relationship thing you're talking about, or you've been talking about a relationship. I just build a relationship with him. Well, David's had a relationship with that kid since he was a kid. Yeah. So you know all those M two kids, they're all gonna you know now. Well, you got Bo Bassett, you got Jack Force, you got all these guys who are up in the air and they're available and. I think the biggest thing is those guys are really good. I think all these guys at their core are good guys, right? Yeah. Like if someone, I don't like someone, they're a used car salesman. I'm just not going to talk about them. Right. I'm going to let you know that right off the bat. You ask me about someone, you'll know when you hit the nail on the head. I'll just, Ryan Morningstar is a good dude. The <laughs> fact that he ghosted you bums me out and I'll go to bat for that guy. He's a good guy. Yeah, I'm sure he is. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah he's yeah. a good dude. Yeah. Um. But like, if you'll you'll know when I'm not like, I'm not cool on someone because I'm just not going to talk about them. But I think that what the what they're doing at Penn State's amazing. Casey Cunningham is as a high character and good of a person as you could ever imagine. Yeah, a, a good, he's strong in his Christian faith. A good dude, genuine dude, cares about the kids, um, and wants to do. You know, he's focused on things. He's focused on kids. He's focused on kids developing, becoming better, getting degrees, winning. I think that that guy's as good. And the Sanderson brothers are just, they don't make them better, you know, as far as developing and recruiting and doing, they got a great system. So, and I think David's going to replicate it in Stillwater and you're going to see a nuclear war and it's going to be like the 2018 NCAA tournament, the greatest NCAA tournament my eyes have ever seen where Bo Nickel pins Miles Barnes to win NCAA title. Closest, one of the closest races ever. I don't know how state, you know, Ohio State was right there, and it was great though. It was great. I loved it. Man, Best tournament so I've been to. Bo Nickel, man. Bo so Nickel's crazy. unreal. He's a mutant. He's an alien. But once again, he's a product of their system. If you want to see yeah. product, David's a product of their system. Aaron Brooks is a product of their system. They all just happen to be the same way. <laughs> yeah. You know, and Carter you got a Roger, kid. You, what's that? Artis Tarachi. Yeah, Carter Strachey. I like Carter. Actually, Carter's cool. Carter's easy to deal with as far as the media stuff. Um, I interviewed him at Madison Square Garden, and he was he's just been super cool ever since and easy to deal with and very available. Roman Bravo Young, great guy. Super nice guys. I like the guys. I think they're good guys. You think Roman Bravo Young ready for Spencer Lee? As long as you don't get on the mat. <laughs> Listen. Spencer Lee is a piece of farm machinery at this point. Spencer Lee is a mangler. Spencer Lee is something that like you get caught in and you can't get out of it. Hey, <laughs> you know, Luke Little Dog wrestled Spencer Lee at the Bill Farrell. And, uh, you know, Luke has real good movement. And like, I mean, to, in my eyes, Spencer Lee was like, wait till I get my hands on you. You know, he's swinging hard. He missed a couple of times. But man, he got in on a high crotch, and Luke usually does a good job of either redirecting the head, attacking hands, and it was like he was stuck. Spencer he Lee's was... different. Spencer <laughs> Lee's different. You know that. He was stuck. He was stuck. I was like, man, this guy must be strong. 
He's well, so he's yeah. so mutant strong. Zane Rutherford is mutant strong like that. Yeah, they're like they're like uh, crush apples. Uh, what's yeah. it? Dean strong dude. They're mutants. Yeah, they're PA mutants, dude. They're they're freaks. But I mean, it's incredible so to watch. So you say Spencer Lee is going to win the Olympics? That's what you bought your money on. Oh uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll listen. I'll take that action. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I think Zane was going to win. I'll tell you what. Last chance, Zane looked pretty damn good. He did. He did. He looked pretty damn good. I know he took an L, but he battled back. I know Spencer mangled everybody, but like Zane's character to come back the hard way he did. Yeah, man. Once again, we're talking about another guy who's the product of the the yeah. Indian Wrestling Club and what Penn State's done. And I, I just, think, yeah. My, my last thing I'm about to let you go. I go. How did you game plan for Spencer Lee? Because if this don't get, get taken hold, down, don't, don't get taken do. down. And it seems like you can only win the match in the second period relying on that he gets real tired. Yeah, but, but the, skill, not, skill. no, no. Here, here, I'm gonna, let, me, let me tell you what happened with Spencer Lee. Spencer Lee would have won in 2021, okay? Oh, yeah. They sacrificed an Iowa team national title for Spencer Lee. They, both of his ACLs, he hasn't been right ever since. Um, Spencer Lee... They they traded that 2021. They because you don't here at this point you don't need to. He doesn't need to run the stadiums at Carver Hawkeye. He doesn't. Right. Need, you just have to maintain. Right. Not let him get hurt because then it becomes Marcus Blaze. Do you understand that? Right. Because Thomas Gilman retired. Right. I, I listen. I love Marcus Blaze. Okay, but I don't know if he's going to win the Olympic championships as a 17. <laughs> right, I'm just, right, right. just going to be honest. I don't know yeah, if yeah. Luke's going to, I don't know if Luke and Jax are going to both win as six, 17 year olds. Nah. I just don't know if it's going to happen. Nah, I know sure. Spencer, healthy, wins the Olympic title. Yeah. Maintain, keep his weight under control. Maintain. Am I a genius? No, I'm a high school teacher and a guy that's a loudmouth on the internet. <laughs> and I can see that, right? Like, right. You don't need to, you don't, they don't need to run him gassers. They don't need right. to, they don't need to make him shark bait with the Santo and yeah. wh whoever Jacks, Luke Lilladon and Marcus Blaze don't need to be beating him up and trying to hurt him at training camp. Yeah. Right. Maintain, maintain. If you maintain Spencer Lee, he will win an Olympic title. Yeah. Did, am I wrong? Did I say anything uh, wrong? I agree. I agree. Dude, you're yeah. a high-level coach. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, I agree. But I just, too, just have to get through there. I don't know what to do with my hands right now. Right. I don't know what to do with my hands. He just has to get there healthy. Just get there healthy. You got to do If you get that guy there healthy with a good weight cut, a good two-week, three-week, four-week, whatever it is, whatever is best for his body, right. if you get him there, he's going to mangle everyone, dude. Gilman, hey, Gilman was five seconds away. From yeah. being in the Olympic final, which he would have won. That's what he lost against the Russian. Yes. He was, dude, yeah. it was like a Merkel situation or whatever. Yeah, well, I had like a weird, and he could, but he was like, just, it would have blown Thomas's knee out had he kept fighting it. Yeah. But if Tom, I'm just telling, and Thomas is pretty dang good, dude. But if you get Spencer Lee to the Olympics healthy, game over. Olympic gold, yellow medal. Iowa City, Franklin Regional High School, Pennsylvania. Book it. I'll put it. Okay. Play this on loop. I don't care. It's going to happen. Man, let me get off of here, man. I got to get ready for the, uh, tomorrow, man. Get my butt up. Coach Robinson, congratulations on being Thank the you. first guy to put 10 champions in the prep nationals, 11 finalists, 10 champs. Keep up the great work, and we will stay in touch. Thank you for being a guest tonight. Oh, thank you for having me on. Thank you for all you do for wrestling. And uh, just thanks for being involved, man. Appreciate you. Good luck, Coach. Have a good one.